This video is sponsored by Storyblocks. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to make chunky, gritty, bulky, beautiful grain in After Effects. You can use it to add shading or texture to absolutely anything. I'll also give you three of my own personal presets with custom controls for rounding out corners, adding an inner shadow, and applying this chunky grain so you don't have to start from scratch. Let's take a look at how to make this effect. So here in After Effects, I'm gonna double click on the rectangle tool to make a shape layer, and I'll double tap the U key to bring up the modified properties. I'll unlink the size, width, and height, and I'll just change this down to say a 500 pixel square and rename this box. Now this chunky grain is really based on one particular effect, noise HLS. So I'm gonna search for that. HLS stands for hue, lightness, and saturation. I'm gonna drag that out to my square, and what this effect allows me to do is apply noise in different channels, the hue, lightness, or saturation, of the layer I've applied it to, but I can also choose from three different types of noise. So I'm gonna grab the lightness, I want the grain to be based on that and just increase it and show you that the uniform noise is very tight and small, what you're basically expecting with noise. Same thing for squared, it's slightly different but still very small. However, there is a grain noise type and if I enable that, it's much chunkier, and not only that, it gives me the grain size control, which allows me to increase the size. The problem is it gets softer as you increase that size. So what I need to do is use another effect to counteract that, and this effect is brightness and contrast, an effect you probably don't use that often. But if I check on Use Legacy, I can use this contrast slider to very quickly and easily increase the brights, decrease the darks, and completely crush the contrast of this noise. I can also use the brightness value to dial it back or push it forward, and that will increase or decrease the amount of grain that's actually visible. So between the brightness and contrast, the lightness and the grain size, I can dial this into a very custom looking grain that I can't get otherwise. Now if I go over to my box and I change the fill color to be something darker, it's going to affect how that grain looks, so be aware of that. And if I add some color into it, it's going to also change things quite a bit. I'm getting not only white grain, but also some black in there as well. So this isn't exactly how I would control the color, but we'll get to that in a minute. I'm gonna leave it at white and actually change this from solid to gradient fill by alter option clicking on that swatch, and that switches it over to a linear gradient. These two controls are the start and end of my gradient and I can place it at the left and right sides of the square, and now we're gonna get a gradient of texture, which looks really cool. I might dial back the size a little bit, reset my brightness and contrast, and just increase the contrast a little bit, but that is such a nice quality of grain. I really love the way that looks. I could Alt or Option click on that swatch one more time, and now it's a radial gradient, and I can use this for almost like shading on this box, and maybe I'll go in and I'll change the roundness so it's a circle, and now this kind of looks like shading on a sphere. So I can play around with these position controls for that gradient until we get something that I'm happy with. So maybe right around there, that's a really cool looking grain. Now there's a lot more that we can do with this grain, but before we go any further, I wanna talk about this video sponsor, Storyblocks. Storyblocks is a massive royalty-free stock asset library, and having a Storyblocks subscription gives you instant access to all the assets you need to create projects quickly. And as a motion designer, getting your work done quickly is sometimes a necessity, which is why Storyblocks is such a valuable asset. Their royalty-free license is included with every plan and is backed with comprehensive coverage. No royalty fees, no need to track your asset usage, no legal jargon. You can create with confidence knowing you're fully covered. New assets are added all the time, including 4K and HD footage clips, templates, music, sound effects, images, and more. You can learn more about Storyblocks by clicking on the link down in the description. Thank you so much to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Back here in After Effects, let's take this a little bit further. I wanna change the colors of this ball, and because it's just black and white values, I can use the tint effect to remap those to whatever I want. So I'll add the tint effect right after brightness and contrast, and just change black and white to be whatever I want. So maybe I want the light part of the ball to be a brighter yellow color, and then I want the black part to be maybe a deep blue. And now I've got this two-toned cool color scheme for this grain. Now I wanna add a solid in the background so I'll press Control or Command Y, except this is not the solid dialog box. This is actually a volume. If you haven't seen my video on Battleaxe's latest freebie, Void, click on the card above and you'll see exactly what that is. 
Now that was actually really close to the actual grain. I don't want it to completely disappear, so let's make that a little bit darker. But this grain is not animated. It's not moving around at all, and like any good textury grain, I want it to be unique on every single frame. So I'm gonna go into the noise HLS effect, and this noise phase control is going to shift it around, except this is a lot more like evolution. It's not a random seed. I don't want it to look like it's moving around. I just want it to be completely unique on every frame. So to achieve that, I'm actually going to add an expression by Alter Option clicking on that stopwatch and then type in a very simple expression. It's called random, and I'm gonna use the autofill to just complete that and put my cursor right between the parentheses. Between these parentheses, I have to put a value to generate a random number. So I'm gonna type in 10,000, and now it's going to generate a random number on every frame of my comp between a value of zero and 10,000. I'll click off and press the space bar and now my grain is dancing all around. It's completely unique on every frame. I like that a lot, but let's say that's too fast. I wanna slow it down so it's not updating on every single frame. Well, then I'll just go back into my expression and drop down a line, and on the first line, I'll type in posterize time. Again, autofill, I'll just press enter. Between those two parentheses is where I wanna put the frame rate for the evaluation of this expression. So if I'm working at 24 frames per second, I wanna half that, I'll type in 12, and now this expression is only going to be calculated every other frame at a rate of 12 frames per second. So I'll just finish that with a semicolon, add one down here for good measure, apply that, and now this is going to update on every other frame. And you can change this value to be whatever you want. So if you wanted to half it again, we could go down to six frames per second, and it's a much slower texture grain now. I liked it at 12, so I'm just gonna undo and get back to that. But that is the basis for the entire grain effect. Now I wanna show you how you can apply this chunky grain with much less work. If I jump over to another comp, I have this little potato character. He's bouncing around, having a great time. I rigged him up using rubber hose with the arms and the legs. It's a fantastic character rigging and animation tool. This is obviously a very simple character with very dooley limbs, but you can do much more complicated stuff with rubber hose. Check that out. I'm also driving all this using voids, which is something that we had in mind when making void using these controllers for character rigs. It's just a really great way to make a character quickly and easily. So he's bouncing around, but he's very flat. And I wanna add some texture, some grit, and some depth to him. So I'm gonna grab the potato layer, and I'm gonna start by just searching for chunky grain. This is the preset that I made that applies everything that we just built all in one, but it also has a chunky grain effect at the top. This is a pseudo effect, so it's basically just an expression controller that's fancy and custom, but it doesn't do anything if you turn it on and off. It's just driving the noise HLS, the brightness and contrast, and the tint that we set up manually before. So you can actually collapse those and we have access to all of the controls that we needed before. So I'm gonna start by just copying the hex code for the fill color and put that in the fill color of the preset. So I'll paste that in there and now the body color is the same. I can take the grain color now. I'll paste in the same value and just make it a little bit darker. So there we go, we've got a potato-y color on that texture. And again, we have access to things like the grain size. So I could increase that. I could go down and increase the contrast to sharpen that up maybe adjust the brightness to dial that in a little bit. I also wanna point out that this is animated by default. Down here, you'll see that we have a grain speed. I could turn this down to 12 frames per second and it's not gonna animate as quickly, or I could turn it all the way off. It's gonna be on by default, but you do have the option to turn that animation off. So that's a very quick way to apply the grain. The problem is this is just a texture. It's not very depthy at all. There's nothing to it and I want some depth. So what I'm gonna do is actually just turn these off for a second and I'm gonna search for another preset. Again, one I'm giving away. So I'm gonna search for inner shadow and I'm going to apply this before all of the other effects. What this does is creates an effects-based inner shadow, not a layer style, because layer styles are rendered after effects. They're basically the last thing to render, so other effects are not going to play with them well. So I wanted a way to create an inner shadow that would interact with other effects without having to pre-compose any layers, and this is how I did it. Let me collapse this up and I'll just walk you through it one at a time. So first we have drop shadow, and what this is going to do is with shadow only checked on is just produce the shadow that gives me controls for the angle, the opacity, all those other things. Next, I'm going to invert that with the invert effect set to the alpha channel. So things that were transparent are now opaque and the other way around. 
Then I took a CC composite effect set to stencil alpha. This is going to take the original layer before effects were applied and use it as an alpha mat for everything that I generated with these other two effects. So we're left with just this inner shadow. But I don't have my original layer, so I need to add one more CC composite set to behind to bring back the original layer behind all the other effects that are generating the actual shadow. Now I can increase the softness and the distance of this drop shadow effect, and it's effectively giving me an inner shadow. But here's where it gets really cool. If I turn all these effects down and I turn on my chunky grain, those effects are going to stack and give me shading now that I have controls with using this drop shadow. So I could dial this around, increase or decrease the softness, maybe dial it back a little bit on the distance, and this gives much more depth to my character. Now, originally, this character is that potato color, and really what I wanna do is change the fill to white. So I'm gonna drag that up to white and you'll see how that affects everything. With all these effects stacked now, this produces much more clear areas with a lot less texture, but I can always go back into my chunky drain controller, turn the grain size down, back off the brightness a little bit if I want some more of that texture in there, increase the grain amount. It's completely customizable and all of these effects work together. But now I have this cool chunky grain acting as shading on my potato that's all animated, it's all working well together and giving the character a lot more depth. I think I do wanna increase the softness a little bit more and maybe push it out just a little bit more and then maybe change the angle. But now you can see that this is all just working together and creating something much more interesting. Now I can jump back out to the main comp and I have my character on top of a scene that I created and I added some texture to the background as well. This again is all using the exact same techniques and I can even show you how I did the floor here if I just jump out. There's a layer here, BG for background. This has everything it needs to create that effect. So if I zoom in here and I turn off all the effects, you'll see that it's just a gradient. And if I double click on the layer, it'll show me the group that has has this gradient fill. And this linear gradient is just set up to have white to black and then white again. And that allows me to have kind of this hard edge and then it fades off back into white. So with those effects turned back on, we're just gonna have the exact same controls as before. Using those two different colors, I'm creating a background that's different from the potato, but it gives it that grainy feel for that ground floor and all the other elements combined. It all comes together and feels like one coherent piece. Now I have a couple other examples that I can show you. Uh, let's jump over to this one, Chunky Grain. Now this is, again, exact same techniques used on the background. It's simply a radial gradient. If I turn those effects off, you can see what that looks like. I just applied the colors so that there's not much contrast between them. It's more of a subtle effect for this source text. I've animated all of my text in this comp using text animator as well as a couple of warp effects. But I've got the text coming out and then I have another adjustment layer here that is actually rounding the corners of my text. It's really subtle, but if you zoom in here and I turn this off and back on, you can see that it just gives it a softer look. And you'll also notice that there's another pseudo effect. This is another preset that I've created. I've just named it round corners. It's very simple. We have a smoothness slider and we have a contrast slider. Now, the way this is working is by applying a blur and then sharpening up the alpha channel. Again, this time using the levels individual controls effect. And as I increase or decrease this, you'll see that it's just bringing in the input black and the input white as I increase that slider. So it's bringing them in towards the middle. So just bring that up until it crisps things up. Not so much that you're getting this threshold look, but enough to just clear up any of these semi-transparent pixels. There are limitations to this. Obviously you can't push this super far or else everything is going to blob into each other. But if I just wanna round off the corners of those text layers, I can do that very easily using those controls. And combining those with the warps and the text animators, it creates something that looks really cool. Again, bring this out into another comp, add in some grain. I added in a shadow using the CC slant effect. It just allows me to slant it in one way or the other, as well as increase or decrease the height and then reposition it wherever I want it. So I just placed it further down on the ground. Maybe I want to slant this over to the left side since the shading is on the left side of the text, the light would be coming from the right. So it's casting a shadow in that direction a little bit more. And then I added a second layer just to act as depth. So if I turn off the top layer, you'll 
you'll see that it's just a solid basically with some grain in there. And then I could scale that down maybe a little bit more just so we can see it around the edges of that text. I could play this back and it just creates a very fun, bubbly, gritty, grainy text animation. Now, if you like this video, I wanna just take a second and ask that you actually do click that like button. That helps me a lot to getting these videos out in front of people so that they can learn all of these cool techniques and I can share these presets for free. So please give it a like and if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button because that again, really helps me and then you'll know when I post new videos. So just go ahead and do those two things for me and let's take a look at the next example. This next one is a little bit more complicated. I definitely made this the hard way by trying to recreate 3D geometry inside of After Effects, but it ended up looking the way that I wanted it to, so whatever, it ended up working. So I'll just walk you through how I made it really quickly. This is kind of a ridiculous process, but I needed a face that I could turn into this kind of diamond shape, the pyramid, that that I then duplicated and rotated around. So the way that I made this was by not using Colorama, that doesn't even need to be in there. Um, CC Power Pin, I just took a linear gradient going from left to right, white to black, and then I used CC Power Pin to pinch in the top to the middle and make this shape. We'll take a step back and go into this next comp and I just duplicated that layer four times, made them all 3D, and I turned it into this 3D pyramid that I had to place by hand. It was not really that much fun, but I got it working. And then I went back another step, I duplicated it, I rotated it around using collapse transformations, I was able to preserve all the 3D, and that gives me all that cool depth. From there, I went to another pre-comp and I started rotating them around. I duplicated them, offset them, I added a drop shadow for the background, pre-composed that one more time, and then added all of my effects into this comp. So Chunky Grain is actually being applied on an adjustment layer, which is one technique that I really like. Being able to just create everything in this black and white format and then apply the grain and the coloring on top of all of that, uh, it works really well and it creates a very cool looking effect. And the way I did these kind of inverting rings was really just by making a ring that animates up. I blurred it out a little bit, but it goes from nothing into filling the entire comp duplicated that comp a few times, offset all of those comps and set them as adjustment layers with the invert effect applied. So when one was revealed, it inverted the image and the next one inverted it back to normal and it just loops. Those drop shadows gave a really cool looking glowy grain and I'm really happy with the way that that turned out. Now, I also had the thought that it could be cool to add some paper texture. So I brought in some paper textures that are included with Texture Looper, which is my own tool. You can find out all about it by clicking on the card above, but I'll just bring out a bunch of paper textures and I'm gonna use my K bar button to turn that into a Texture Looper comp. I'm gonna change the blend mode to overlay and increase the contrast a little bit with the levels effect that's automatically applied and then make it a little bit more subtle by lowering the output black and output white. But now that is going to loop at 12 frames per second, changing that texture and giving this entire comp a more organic feel, which is what I was going for for this comp. I really like that. So again, check out Texture Looper if you haven't already. It's the quickest and easiest way to apply this kind of texture looping effect to anything in After Effects. All right, I have one last example here. This one is really fun. I was very happy with the way that it turned out, but it's this sunset. I named it sunrise, but I'm just now realizing it's a sunset uh, of this cabin in the woods with the smoke. This smoke is using the exact same technique in one of my earliest tutorials. You can click the card above again to check that out. And everything else is again, just using the same techniques. I actually applied the inner shadow effect stack to the background here so you can see what that looks like. And then I applied the chunky grain with the green and the dark green for the grain. Inside my sunrise source, this is a comp that's just made up of a bunch of black and white layers, some gradients, and a lot of these layers are set to silhouette alpha, so they're actually punching holes through to the background, like the smoke here. That's punching a hole through the black background, the trees in the foreground as well, the cabin. The sun actually has a gradient, which is what's generating this cool grain on the sun as it sets, but also as that sun sets, you'll notice that the sky is changing color from the bottom up. So so that is being achieved using a gradient that is again just a shape layer with a linear gradient going from black to white and it's matted using the sky layer in the background with just a rectangle to hold everything into that shape but I enabled that sky so that at the beginning when the gradient is all the way down at the bottom we're still going to see everything else in the comp. 
but this way the gradient just fills up that shape. And when you stack on all these other effects, you're gonna get that grain that turns out really, really nice and cool. The only other thing I did differently in this comp was add a turbulent displace and roughen edges effect. So if I turn those off, you can see it's much more clean and vectory with them on. It's gonna roughen everything up. And I animated the random seed using that random expression for both the turbulent displace and the roughen edges. So it all moves and vibrates. It looks a little bit more organic than if it were just straight shape layers with that texture applied. But that's it for the chunky grain effect. If you use this effect, or any of the presets, please tag me at Jake in Motion. I love seeing your work and getting to share it with all of my followers. So definitely don't be afraid to tag me when you create something that you use from me. Also leave a comment down below if there's anything about this technique that you liked or you think that could be improved or added to, I would love to hear your thoughts. Again, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already so that you can stay up to date with all of my tutorials. Thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon for the continued support. If you're interested in supporting more tutorials like this one, then please consider becoming a patron that really does help me produce more content. And huge thank you to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Sponsors are a huge reason why I'm able to continue making content like this free for you to learn from and be able to share this knowledge, share these cool presets, and continue making fun After Effects tutorials. So thank you to them and thank you to you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.